The Avengers! I'm gonna need the retro glasses for this one. I think that's enough retro glasses for one day. Originally an arcade machine from 1991, Captain America and the Avengers was developed and ported to the Mega Drive in 92 by original developers Data East. You may be familiar with some of their other hit titles such as Diet Gogo, Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja, Kamikaze Cabby, Temple Pup, and my personal favourite, Zippy Bug. Alright, so originally they might not be their thing, but they've still made some pretty fun games over the years. And Captain America and the Avengers on the Mega Drive is definitely occasionally, sometimes kind of sort of fun-ish. So the story starts out with us being introduced to Red Skull's super secret plan to take over the world. By using a mind control machine, he's been able to control the minds of a whole bunch of villains, and as an Avenger, we have to try and crush his evil scheme. And what's a superhero story without a bunch of memorable and witty dialogue? I'm not kidding when I say that Captain America and the Avengers has some of the most unique dialogue I've ever heard. See my power! The overacted and compressed voice acting kind of tops off the whole bundle. 8-Bit doesn't exactly lend itself kindly to the human voice. It sounds like someone's got a mailbox on their head. In a submarine. Under the ocean. With a sock in their mouth. Surrounded by bees. But this is all part of the game's charm. It just wouldn't be the same without it and I love it more because of it. I love that the developers still felt that they needed to subtitle the English dialogue. They knew we'd never be able to understand it without it. The gameplay here is pretty stock standard for a side-scrolling brawler. They've sort of gone with the old if it ain't broke don't fix it idea, which is okay I guess, but I still can't help but feel there are a few missed opportunities here which is a bit of a shame. You can choose to play as one of four characters, Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, or that guy. It took me a while to figure out that that's actually supposed to be Vision. I don't know why he's white or why it looks like he's covered in paper mache, but that's definitely Vision. Also, it, it says he's Vision. Each character has two main attack types, a short range melee and a long range projectile. What I've never understood about this version of the game is that for some reason there are two buttons for short range attacks which do exactly the same thing. But if you want to do a ranged attack, you have to press one of the attack buttons and jump at the same time. There was a spare button right there. This wouldn't usually be a huge problem, but the controls aren't as responsive as they should be at the best of times. In a lot of cases, having to press two buttons at once just ends up confusing the game, meaning that ranged attacks rarely do what you want them to. Sometimes when you want to shoot a projectile across the screen, you'll just end up jumping instead. And when you want to jump and do a ranged attack, you'll just end up standing on the ground like an idiot. And when you finally get your butt in the air, you'll just end up doing some sort of strange, weird, awkward fly kick instead. The game can get kind of tricky, so this doesn't really help you out. Although I did remember how to do this. The enemies are also pretty basic. There are only a couple of different types throughout the entire game, and they all have very similar attacks. I know this isn't that strange for a brawler, but it still seems like it could have been done a little better. Instead of being smart about enemy types and their placement in an area, it seems like the developers have just gone, right, that guy looks good in here. Now add a few more. Little more, little more, little, oh, too much, take it back. The screen just ends up being flooded by a bunch of the same enemy to slow you down. In a lot of cases, the enemies surround you and trap you in a never-ending cycle of being hit, getting up, taking a step, and being hit again. Instead of being based on your skill, clearing an area without losing much health can just come down to pure luck. Now, I know I'm making it seem like I hate the game, but trust me, I don't. Technically speaking, Captain America and the Avengers isn't a particularly strong game, but regardless, it's still a whole heap of fun. If I'm being completely honest here, if the characters are replaced with Captain Crunch, Tin Man, this dumb looking seagull and elf, I probably wouldn't be talking about the game right now. Actually, you know what, I probably would be, just not for the same reasons. Anyway, that's besides the point. Part of what makes this game so much fun is that you can play as an Avenger. You can throw cap shields, you can shoot Iron Man's lasers, or... You know, if you really want to be, you can be this jerk who just throws a bunch of rocks. I gotta, gotta, gotta. The 
controls can be floaty, the combat could do with some tweaks, and the enemies are pretty much the same throughout the entire game. But for some reason, it just sort of works. I wouldn't call the Mega Drive version of Captain America and the Avengers an amazing game by any stretch, but it's still a fun part of a pretty cool arcade game from back in 1991. So what are some of the horrible, I mean nostalgic games that you guys love? Let me know in the comments below.